the biggest area that needed the most help was female hormone health. So that's the area that the delta value between here's how bad it is and how good it could be, huge gap. Yeah. And every woman was kind of told, well, you're a woman, you're supposed to have these problems, it's hormones, right? That you're supposed to have a crazy menopause and infertility and PCOS and all these problems, which no, you don't have to have if you understood the genetics of the hormone cascade. And what's that thing that makes it more difficult for women is there's something called estrogen toxicity. So when you make your hormones on a monthly basis, progesterone becomes testosterone, becomes estrogen. And in that cascade, you can do those at different rates and speeds. So fill different buckets at different levels. And once you finally fill the estrogen bucket, you then have three options, two, four, or 16 hydroxyestrogen. Two is the good, clean stuff you want. Four and 16 are toxic. 16 being more toxic than four. And a lot of the women we're seeing that are coming to us saying, I have fibromyalgia, I have infertility issues, endometriosis, crazy migraines, mood issues. They're making these two metabolites. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this a problem of today's generation? Because the genome alone is not enough. The genome is, here's how your body works. Here's the red flag. Let's prioritize this. Now... We need to understand your epigenetic habits. What is your environment? What is your nutrition? What is your lifestyle? And the pairing of those two is your net result. And the reality is that today, the hormone disrupting threats are so prolific that there's so many more problems. So the women that were estrogen toxic in grandma's generation didn't get sick. They were, they were toxic. It caused some inflammation, but the body can handle some inflammation. Now the total load is so much that it's causing all these issues, including breast cancer. And this was a big thing we learned and we can now deal with that root cause and make sure that women don't get sick. Got it. So there are so many things in our environment like plastics and food and um, the air that we breathe from all of the chemicals being sprayed in the air to EMF disrupting frequencies. All of that. Um, all of those things, they, but especially um, the consumables, like drinking out of plastic and the stuff in our food, that is estrogen, that creates more estrogen. Yeah, it's your body treats it as if it's additional estrogen, right? So that's it, it, why it's called an estrogen mimic. So it mimics estrogen. So it's not actually estrogen. When it enters your body, your body can get confused, thinks it's estrogen. So genes turn on to convert it into that estrogen byproduct, which is toxic and inflammatory. Because estrogen is such a female hormone, mm -hmm. does it is it kind of amping that up, like making more female? Like I think about female, like having curvier bodies or like just like does it continue to does it make you more woman too? So that's what's happening to men. So that's kind because, of what I was going to ask next. Is, that yes. I was say, is this something that's happening to men? And is this yes. why perhaps we're seeing um, more shifting with men to women, whether it's through transitioning. Same cascade that I said, progesterone to becomes testosterone, comes, men do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. We just do it daily. Men have women, men have a daily cycle, women have a monthly cycle. Same mm -hmm. exact cycle. And men are more likely to be more androgenized, more testosterone. Women are more likely to be more estrogenized. So yeah. now the answer to that question isn't a blanket answer. It depends yeah. on what your hormones look like. So mm -hmm. if someone like you who's more androgenized, more chiseled features, petite frame, right? That's more testosterone testosterone. So that's going to drive you from androgenized to call it what the typical estrogenized woman would have been, mm -hmm. right? Now, a woman who's already estrogen dominant is now going to not maybe get more curvier figures, but she's going to start to get some of the um, conditions like fibrom fibromyalgia, endometriosis, mm -hmm. you know, crazy migraines, mood issues, because she's over estrogenized. And if she's also toxic, too much inflammation. Okay. What we're seeing with the men um the, I guess the, the the change in culture and the femininity among, around, among men, yeah, there's no surprise when you're taking what used to be a manly man, you know, and you're removing all of what creates testosterone, the fight, the vigor, the, the training, the exercise, and you're sedentary. And so there's a funny thing with hormones. When you sort of lean forward and fight, that calls on your body to create more testosterone. When you create more testosterone, it calls on your body to lean forward and fight. 
and you get on this vicious cycle forward, right? Same is true of the backwards, or the opposite, I should say. If you kind of lean back and like, I'm not going to do it, you get more estrogenized. The, the warrior versus the worrier, right? And so we all now have a warrior lifestyle, sit in a chair and type, right? And be afraid of everything. Uh, everything is a problem. Hmm. And don't train, don't fight, don't do anything politically incorrect, you know, tone yourself down. And so we're all going into this warrior mode, which is also an estrogen problem. All of us, right? So uh, the men that are out there saying, let's do something and rile ourselves up and become men, there's something to be said there in terms of not losing half of our gender, <laughs> right? What's the solution? Well, the solution, it's, it depends. I mean, if if it's like, is it a pill? Yeah, there's pills. Or is it a culture shift? Yeah, that's probably necessary also. You know, we're, we're, there's some things we're trying to fix, right? There's some which need to be fixed, inclusion, Yes, let's fix inclusion because there's some people, I have had two business partners uh, in the last few years that are both gay, right? And they need to be included and not be discriminated against, right? Right. And, but the, but what is also true is a person who does, isn't innately, you know, uh, by choice or by birth, right. but more by influence of chemicals and hormones. Right. And, you know, confusion, unnatural. unnatural, right? That was not their who they naturally are, right? right? So you're, you're taking away the identity of someone who actually is something and then lending it to somebody to create confusion. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with hormone disruption. We're seeing it over and over and over and over and over again. So the, to, to answer your question, the chemicals are disruptive. The birth control is disruptive. The Teflon coated frying pans are disrupted. The plastics are disrupted. So understand that ancestral habits are the healthiest habits. That's what we are still wired for. Our bodies have not caught up genetically to cope with all of that. Plastics don't clear your body. They, they cause cancer and they just float around forever, right? Forever chemicals don't leave. I don't know, it was about a month ago, I read this article about Lululemon pants being loaded with uh, fluorine, which is a forever chemical, which just doesn't leave. You know, and it's very specifically in the crotch lining, which is when you're sweating with an opening, taking in the fluorine, you know. Yeah, amazing, right? So um, just understanding, so to answer your question, understanding how prolific hormone disruption is in your environment and your food and everything you do, from the chemicals you're spraying on your tabletop to the pesticides in your lawn, mm. what is hormone disruptive, what is not? Understand that. Second is, it's so prolific that it may even be hard to manage even then. So you may decide that hormone treatment is beneficial for you, right? You may still want to be the manly man or the womanly woman. And you may want to take hormones because our reality, again, is not grandma's reality. Our genes are their genes, but our context is different. We're in a different bucket with different problems that we are not designed for. So mm -hmm. we need more intervention. We need more supplementation or whether it's hormones or even just things like DIM that slow down the estrogen pathway. Simple supplement. It's a broccoli extract, right? So it's a combination of these two things. Understanding the threats, eliminating them, understanding what you can do to add and supplement to turn the dial up on your capacity to be that person you were supposed to be. The, this area that scares me the most right now, which is our food and, you know, the, 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 the scare of mRNA being added into animals and foods for our consumption, like what the hell's going on? <laughs> How's that going to go more towards, again, our sort of biological nature? Is this meant to affect our genetics? So let me tell you a story. Right now in the state of Missouri, there is a bill that's trying to be passed. I think it's Bill 1169 that says that foods that have mRNA technology in them need labeling to warn people that this may alter your genome. And the current state is there's a lot of pushback by big food and big pharma. Why is there pushback if there's no problem? So since 2018, so mRNA, we know of it post COVID, right? We think it's a brand new thing that landed in 2020. mRNA for pigs started developing in 2012. It's been used in pork since 2018. The pork you've been eating since 2018 has mRNA technology in it. 
That's not a secret. Yeah, it's made by Moderna and Merck. Great. And and now yeah, and now here's the really wonderful part of the story mm. is the way it was designed is there's a baseline uh, product which is call it the delivery method and because it's mRNA and it's custom they respond to each unique virus by creating this custom portion that then gets injected into that flock of pigs, right? That custom portion, which is the active portion, has no requirement for safety check from FDA. Oh. Because this, yeah, because this thing is approved, this baseline was approved, went through all the vigorous whatever is required. The It's a custom product. So how can we possibly approve a custom product? We have to immediately respond to whatever the new virus is. So this thing does not require approval. And this is why the state of Missouri, who's per trying to prevent, which is, you know, such a big part of their um, sort of their ecosystem, farming and agriculture, they're saying, no, we don't understand what this does yet. And you can't prove to us that it doesn't do what we're worried that it does. Please put a label. That's all we're saying in this bill to warn people. And there's major, major pushback. Why is there pushback? Because the, what is the label claim? This may alter your human genome. So if you have a signal, an mRNA signal that's designed to edit something, how do we know it doesn't stop at the animal it was injected in if you're eating it? Well, why are they injecting the animal in the first place other than to give it to us? Is there a reason? Well, it's it, it's meant to be like an antiviral. So, you know, protecting. So they, vaccines have been used in animals for some antibiotics, right? So they're just saying, here's a better way to do it. It's custom for the actual strain in that local farm or area. I see. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. It doesn't add up. You know, there's right now, there's over 100 million wild animals that are being injected with mRNA. Cool. Our, yeah. To basically just infect the planet. Because if they're yeah. wild, they're going to... And let me just like check and balance this real quick. Because you said that we haven't had our genes really changed since 250,000 years ago. So is this on an epigenetic level that we're being altered so, or is this a baseline genetic thing so the scary thing is we don't know huh? we, we don't really know what this stuff does uh but what we do know is crispr technology exists and what we do know at the you know uh biotech level me being in the biotech industry mm -hmm. is it's not it's not ready for me to develop a product yet Right. I, I have tried to make products like, for example, I know that I can prevent cardiovascular disease if I can alter the 9P21 gene, which gives you a more robust endothelial lining, the ar arterial walls. If I make your arterial walls stainless steel, you're not getting cardiovascular disease. So I'm oh, waiting yeah, for I the need day. that because remember, yeah. I have terrible veins. You, you I have do. The worst yeah. quality, worst quality yes. genetic veins. Yeah, but so the highest waiting. dopamine. So you know, you get a trade off. You got yeah, you get a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. So what I'm <laughs> trying to do is fix the bad, which is if I can make a CRISPR technology product, gene editing, gene therapy, mm -hmm. then great, I can fix that problem. So I'm being told right now I can't do that. Meanwhile, um, we don't know who has access to what, right? Uh, the, the, in theory, CRISPR works. So is it that it's not yet available, or is it just not yet available to me? If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.